the last one we're going to talk about in the three down portion we've kind of talked about on different shows here between Bolo show and other items that have come up we've talked about it. and it's been talked about on social media recently but it's one that's not necessarily cold but it's something of the opinion from simple man's comics between jack and i we're kind of against this and we're talking about artificial scarcity yeah it's a trend we're seeing pop up more and more in the hobby and it's just one that brad and i are personally very cold on um, and I think some I've heard, and the reason why it came up and we wanted to include it on the list is we've heard a lot of social media talk in the last week. There have been several posts on various forums and boards and places on the internet. Um, and the question gets posed to us quite often about print runs as it comes this artificial scarcity, where it comes into play most frequently is with retailer exclusive variants. Now we, use this slogan integrity and community as being at the core staple of right of what we are as a channel um and f- for our in full transparency brian and i have been very actively involved in the creation of store variants in the past but we can stand comfortably with that because we always worked very hard to be as transparent as possible with the process so when we released a variant um we let everyone know where the allocation of copies were. So if you can go back and you can watch any video announcement of us releasing a variant, Brian and I will say there's 250 copies printed, 150 are being sold, 50 are being allocated to writers, 50 are being allocated for giveaways, the other 150 will be sold, this is the price. Or the retailers getting some of them. Yeah, so we were all, we were, extremely trans- publisher not retailer yeah, publisher right the publisher um uh, which some publishers would require to do micro print runs so if you wanted to do a hundred print run of a book a small retailer a small publisher may say well okay you can do that but let us have 10 because we want to have every book we create we want to have at least some representation of um so we were always really transparent with that because it, it, it's really funny when you do retailer exclusives, right? Because Brian, there's no other comics in the market where we know what the print runs are. So why do we feel entitled to know what the print run is for retailer exclusives? I really don't know that, but we do, right? That market basically demands it. Um, and we've seen that change a lot over the years, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. You know, in the early days, I remember back when we were on like the, the old CBSI boards, um, there in the, when stores first started doing retailer exclusives, there was a lot of lying. There was a lot of retailers who would say that a book was printed 500 and they would get caught selling multiple thousands onto the market. It was the wild west. And I think that the market, because of that, demanded a level of transparency. Um, and we've seen that over the years. And now the market's pretty smart, right? People know that like when Marvel requires you, if you're going to do a variant, and we've talked about this openly on the channel, they require a 3,000 print run minimum order. Same with DC. Um, and, you know, places, independent companies like Image, they'll do smaller, but the larger ones like Image and uh, Boom usually require about 500. And then if you're going down to like Mad Cave or places like that, you can, you can literally almost kind of negotiate that between you and the the uh, publisher, but we're seeing more and more, Brian, we're seeing like Marvel variants solicited with the print run listed far lower than 300,000, aren't we? Yes, very, a lot, like a quarter of it. (laughs) Right, and how is that possible? Well, it's not possible. And this is what becomes uh, really an issue and where we kind of like, we're talking about it a lot. And we wanna know what you guys think in the comment section. Because Brian and I, we want to, in the future, we want to produce uh, Simpleman's Comics variants. But this is just something we would never do, which is to print 3,000 of a book. Now, yes, there's going to be some damages, right? And that's going to naturally affect the print. Um, But we're seeing more and more stores solicit that there's a 600 print run for a book. Um, I know you've seen it on Instagram. I know you've seen it on your favorite websites. And... In reality, there was 3,000 printed. So what are they doing with the other 2,400 copies of these books? Well, allegedly, they're destroying them. Now, some of them, yeah, some of them do, and they show it, right? Right. We see the, the spectrum of that. We've seen videos of stores destroying it. 
We've seen stores claim it. Um, we've seen stores give away the coverless copy as a reader copy with the with the book that you order. Um, we've seen every variation between, but the truth is, we don't see anyone coming out there saying there's 3,000 printed of this book. We're destroying 2,400, and we're selling 600. Um, instead, you know, you're getting the 600 print run being advertised, but you're not getting the other part, the messy part of this, this whole equation advertised because some of the comic community doesn't want to think about 2,400 books being torn apart. Um, and scarcity determines pricing, right? So if you look at any of those variants that are limited to 600, they tend to have a higher price. Um, yeah, versus because if they are destroying them, they're, they got to still pay for them, but exactly. now they're destroying them to, to make it scarce. Right. So if a book is $4 cover price and you're paying $2 a book um, and you have to order 3000 that's $6,000. If you destroy 2400 and you're left with 600 well, you're now into them for $10 each versus being into them for $2 each. And so you've got to charge more in order yeah. to make any sort of a positive ROI. Not to mention you ordered 3000 of them. So you're going to get, if it's a hot book with a bunch of great incentives, you're getting all those incentives from the 3000 that you ordered, not the 500 that you're selling. Exactly. And that's the thing. So that's, it's another part of where this kind of misconception where I personally have an issue with it. Um, I think that I, uh, uh, there's so many, there's such a distaste for, for the retailer um, exclusive programs, but I think that they're really essential to, to today's modern kind of comic and how you advertise yourself. Um, and I'm, I feel like we're blessed to work with people who do it right, um, who are very forthcoming with their print runs. Um, and it's not necessarily an indictment on any, any individual, but it's something I'm seeing pop up more and more and more in the hobby. And people are starting to ask that question. And because we talk about print runs, people come to us and say, well, you know, if a person you know, well, what about say a grab bag or a mystery box? Like, how can they do it? Well, no, like we, if we printed uh, a book with DC comics and we did a 3000 print run and we included one in every bolo box and we didn't want another copy to go out besides the bolo box. Well, I'd have to have either 3000 bolo boxes signed up or I'd have to destroy or do something else, put them in a warehouse. We don't know. But the more transparency you get from a variant program, the more you know what collectible you actually have. Otherwise, you're paying money for false scarcity and you're being manipulated by a company. A company is causing you to pay more money than you ever would. And, and why is that, is that accepted within the comic community? Um, it's certainly not on, at, for myself as a consumer. And it's certainly nothing I ever want to take part in. And it was a discussion as we developed our variant program um, previously with Comic Book Invest, and it was something that Brian and I were very staunchly against that we said we never wanted to take part in. But uh, again, let us know in the comments section how you guys feel about these retailer exclusive variant print runs and the, the need for transparency. And how do you guys feel about part of the print run being destroyed and uh, artificial scarcity in general? Yeah, it's just, again, we want to just reiterate. That's our opinion. That's why we don't like it. That's not to say there's something wrong with you, yeah. the buyers, or you. We always say, always say, it's your money. Buy what you like. I don't understand how people let people influence what they're going to buy and collect because they're not the ones, unless they're saying, hey, here's 20 bucks. I want you to buy this for your collection. They have no right to decide what you're going to buy for your collection. So by all means, if you want to go buy them, buy them. It's just we're voicing our opinion on what we think about stuff like that.